Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome to a special edition of Car Sessions. Yeah, something I've been moved just to do this today. Um, there's a lot of craziness going on in the world, and I want to bring some type of balance here. What's up, everyone? Let's take your time coming in here. Yeah, um, I'm sure everybody, everyone, everyone is seeing what's going on in the media. It's it's crazy right now. What's up, Brandon? Cheating while going. You know what I mean? Curtis, what's up? Jay in the building. Hold on, Jay. Let me get you in here. What's up, Ryan? Hi, my friend. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? I said they put right away. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, this is the first time I've ever. Yeah, this is the only first time I've ever even gone on Facebook. I think live. I don't know. I don't really do that stuff. So. You, you're my first. <laughs> I'm, I'm, excited to, I'm excited to be talking with you. You, you. you and I always tend to talk, have some good conversations. I mean, you're, you, out of anyone that I know, hit the streets. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I, it, there's gonna be protesting tomorrow in Detroit. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'll be there. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I've always been more active in my own community. You know, it's hard for me to comment on any other places because that's I don't live there. I'm not there at the time. You know, I'm not in Minneapolis. Uh, I think, I think what, okay, so the, so maybe the nice thing about, nice thing, I'm saying nice thing about what's going on, right? Uh, it's, it is very impressive to see all walks of life protesting in Minneapolis. A lot more um, white people than normal. Uh, but what I think people need to understand uh, about that is, is, we're, you need to be standing in solidarity with people of color. It's, it's it's their time for their voice to be heard. You know, just stand in solidarity and, and let that community speak for itself. You know, they, I'm not discrediting seeing a lot of white people in Minneapolis protesting. I'm just saying that it's not for their voice to be heard. You know, so that's just kind of how I feel about it. It's only my my own personal outlook of it. I'll, t I'll tell you. What you're doing. I welcome, hey, Dad, hey, Dad, I welcome white people to the bottom. But as you said, it's not the way that should be heard first, but I welcome the parents because without them, it's just, it's just a shooting gallery. Yeah. And we know that for a fact. Without, without white people in this, in this audience, it's just a shooting gallery. They, they would shoot everybody. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I believe. I absolutely uh, back your statement. And I think. People don't understand, you know, rioting and, and looting. Well, they had that police station completely surrounded and barricaded in with guns on the roof. And, yeah, people were throwing Molotovs at the station, you know. And these people are so frust frustrated with everything. Tensions run high. Your adrenaline kicks in. If you can't attack the police station because, I mean, they might shoot you anyways. You know, you, you're going to burn and destroy everything around you, around that police station, you know. And, yeah. That's, that's the anger and frustration. You know? it, it is. And, and, you know, people can sit there and say, oh, looting is taking away from what, what the situation is. And it's like, you know, and that's actually one of the the biggest, I mean, you're stealing a material item. And these days in 2020, it seems like material items are more important than a person. You know what I mean? So I, I, I'm not saying that I would ever loot. I'm just, I understand it, you know. I understand it. It's frustration. It's tension. It's, 
adrenaline in the moment when you're getting shot with a rubber bullet that's the size of a fist, you know? Um, I don't know. It's, uh, it, I, I tried, you know me, Kuli, I tried so hard to be positive about everything. When I, when, I, when I see this, my, my first reaction is, I want to get it done, too. I want to get it done, and I want to protect myself, because I, I, I know from experience, this is just my own experience. When they come for you, you got a slim chance of no problem. Yeah, no, it's true. I, I think that's the thing is, you, you know, there's a lot of activists in Detroit that carry hammers. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not talking about a hammer you hit a nail with. I'm talking about a <laughs> you know, you know, Which I don't think a lot of people... I think a lot of people, I guess on the so-called right, don't understand that. A lot of us do. I'm not saying it's right or any, anyone wants to. And in your case, I would 100% carry a pistol because you're right, you know? I mean, just... This is... This is this isn't just about Mr. Floyd, you know what I mean? This is, he is the catalyst for how, I mean, people, they, they can't take it anymore, you know? They didn't even, I mean, this is a perfect example. You know, he was just murdered a, a couple of days ago. They haven't had the autopsy report. If the autopsy report comes out and they'll be able to actually hopefully charge the man who murdered this man, uh, which, man, it's a, man. they probably won't, right? He'll get some lesser charge. Yeah, yeah. But, People weren't even going to wait around for him to be arrested yet, you know, or that to be done. People, they, they just, they reached yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. It's been happening for, you know, a hundred years in this country with the police, right? Yeah, you know, and that, that's, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't even have any solutions for it. I mean, this guy, this guy who murdered Mr. Floyd supposedly has three different shootings under his belt, all of minorities. And I believe maybe two of them are deaths. How, how is he allowed to be on the police? You know? It's, uh, it's business as usual. Yeah, I, right, right. It, it, it's exactly what it is. And, and that's it is business as usual. And that's, that's, that's the thing. Man. The whole entire system is... To grab a gun. Sure. Sure. And the second one that's in the you need to relax because you're going to go to jail and you're going to lose everything you have. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But the anger still, the anger still remains, the hopelessness still remains. I don't want to go and start liking pages and just like ticking this because I'm angry and I'm not going to give you action. You know, the call, the call to action is what I'm going to out there. Like how this is a this is a systematic thing. So now I'm not talking about Democrats, I'm not talking about Republicans, I'm talking about the system itself. Mm -hmm. to be in the yeah. And check and it's not just they always have their own that check them in investigating each other. Yeah. So there needs to be something separate. Oh goodness. Something separate from the regular same old same when it comes to the investigation. I'm just not, um, not a country. Yeah. No, I, this, I, this is us. This is us, the people that that, that, that can do that. Yeah. How? We need an attorney. We need an attorney to try to live here and try to establish something. Yeah. I think one big piece of this puzzle a lot of people are really missing is we all need each other. You know what I mean? We need each other. And there's plenty of people on the left and right that may not agree on things, but I bet you there is common ground that certain people do agree on. You know what I mean? There needs to be a common ground. People like us, we're working class or poor. You know? And there's way more of us in the country. You know? It, I know I probably don't see my usual self right now. It's pretty angry, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm angry, but I'm also like so contained because I've seen it before. I know. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm outraged by it. 
I'm hurt, but I'm also again feeling a little bit of like, oh, here we go again. This is yeah. Well, see, in New York City, where where I used to deliver I mean, paper. Have you seen it all over? Yeah, I remember seeing it as a little kid in Detroit. It was a very famous situation where, where I used to deliver papers in the neighborhood. I used to deliver papers. Uh, some police killed a man named Malice Green. You know, and so as a little kid, I I saw that and understood it because I was delivering the papers. I'd read the newspaper. And read about Mouse and yeah, both of those cops, you know, did actually get busted, but this was brought to my attention that this happens with the police. You know, when I was 12, 13, you know, I, I, I feel like, yeah, is it business as usual? Yeah, it is. It's the same thing over and over again, right? Yeah. It, ne it never ceases to upset me. It never ceases to, to I just don't get it. I don't understand how it can go on, and it's very important to see that the people of Minneapolis were, were just, they are done with it, and it happened quickly. It happened way quicker than almost any of these situations have in the past 20 years, you know? Maybe, maybe it is different this time, but, you know, this is America. I feel like it's just going to be business as usual, you know? And I, I hope that it's not, but... This guy just suggested something. I don't know why I'm going to do it. Roman Zapata. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, it's, there's ways to reform it, figure it out, and make it work. But, it, you know, will they? I don't know. You're not breaking up, by the way. At least I'm. I'm seeing my yeah, check it out. Though. I'm, 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 I'm seeing you perfectly, just so you know, and hearing you perfectly. So, I have them, yeah. Mm, yeah, see, it's weird. I've, no I've noticed even with some of these Zoom conversations, people are saying that they're breaking up and stuff, but sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. I think it depends on whose phone it is that it's going to. I don't hear an echo. <laughs> All good, man. I'm good. You guys, just catch me on, catch me on the second echo. <laughs> oh man, I miss, I miss you, dude. Me, I miss you. Yo, but uh, let me play one of your jokes. Hold on a second. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't announce him, but we have Jay here from Hellmouth and Jay Navarro and the Traders. The suicide machine. I'm sure you have anything else lurking back there. I don't know that. Yeah, once in a while, Break Anchor plays, and then I've got like a, a you know, total crust punk band that is really low key. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, well, music was help. I am saying, I love this dude right here. Uh, I, I love you, Lion. You know that. You know that. For sure. For sure. Hold on, let me play your new record. Play some of the new record. Okay. okay. So how when did, when did you uh, when did you release this new album? Uh, a year ago. Uh, like I think it was last February, something like that. So we've been sitting on it a while. You know, we just kind of. Uh, I think Fat Records maybe had a bunch of albums they were already putting out, so we just said, yeah, we're not in any rush, just whenever you get around to it, you know? So, yeah. Uh, you know, no rush, man. No rush, you know? Yo, I got, a, I got two records right now. 
one of them imagine that you and it's like it's finished uh, 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 uh. Just, uh, just, uh, just uh, like was a bunch of friends in Jamaica or just session guys that you kind of no, no, no. I, I, have a, I have a producer with me. Have a producer. cool yeah let me see if I got this right you were you're born in Jamaica but then lived in England and then moved to New York or I well, how well, how's that circle go I can't remember Born in New York. Ah. Moved to New York. Yep, okay, gotcha. Mother in Jamaica. Yeah. Father in Jamaica. All right. Well, I'm going to take you up on hanging out in your property down in Jamaica, so just eventually. <laughs> so we can just okay, okay, let's go I need a, I need a break from this world, man. It's nice. Yeah, I need a break. I, I, I think I'm up and ready. Oh, nice. I'm here. I don't know. No one wants to hear my band anyways. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah. They didn't want They're only here for you. Uh, uh, I just wanted to talk to you. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you too, but that's what I kind of, I kind of wanted to set a balance. Anytime you hear it, it, it doesn't get a real perspective. You get the anger, but you don't get any kind of balance or any kind of uh, articulation. Yeah, yeah. How do we Darryl, find out? Oh, Daryl, I'm going to have you. Uh, Daryl, I'll tell you, Daryl, I'll get you on the You know Daryl Wilson? Yeah, I think so. Sounds really familiar. Who is that? She knows. Yeah, yeah. Brain's a little fucked. He's got the punk band. He's got the punk band. You got the what? He's a doctor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. The Bull Weevils, man. Yes. One of the best punk rock bands of all time. 100%. And he's a punk band. So yep. Daryl's going to get on the show. Daryl yeah. doesn't know this yet, but he's going to get on the show. He's totally not smart at all. <laughs> I feel yeah, I, I I love Daryl. He's he, he's awesome. He's awesome. I'm actually uh uh skating bull weevil wheels right now. I have bull weevil skateboard wheels on my skateboard <laughs> from Portland Wheel Company. <laughs> he's got Daryl's face on the wheel. Oh no! Yeah, except he's except his face is blue because they're trying to stick to the Chicago colors. It's it's funny. They're telling me my voice sounds like the peanut gang. <laughs> tell me, tell me if the if the music at least gets through. If my voice get, doesn't get through, that's fine. But tell me if the music gets through. Here we go. <laughs> Huh? Might be too loud now. That sounds like the peanuts <laughs> gang. <laughs> yeah, it hurts. Wagwan coolie. <laughs> no, no, no. I I uh, who knows, man. What I'm gonna do is keep talking to you for a second. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll say goodbye and then pay your bills. Yeah, man. Yeah. That that. I'm shut it off and come back in. That that you're about to play was almost like what I was saying earlier. It's like that song you're about to play is it has to do with the fact that I was saying, you know, we all need each other, and we let some of the most ridiculously the most ignorant things in this world divide us as, as human beings. You know? And, and 
human beings are really can, that can be loving. They're, they're loving. They're, they're human beings that need to interact. Human beings need to interact with each other. We need each other. Yet these things that you know people like that are in our government, so to speak, or you know these multinational billion-dollar corporations that run the world, they throw these stupid wrenches in our paths that keep us apart as people. That's what that song is about that you're about to play. And uh, funny note is I thought it sounded like Berlin riding on the metro always. It made me laugh. But we kept it. You know, it sounds like riding on the metro by Berlin. Like, but that's cool. Like, <laughs> we're just keeping it anyways. Did it. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's Leslie from uh, the Murder City Devils playing the organ on there. And a couple of the guys in the traders playing keys too. So, fun jam. I don't know what's going on thing here, people, but I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say goodbye to Jay. Jay, I want you to come back on again, uh, whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to get you on for the longest, but thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me. And you know, I appreciate you. Ah, you know I love you, man. You know I love you. I love you too, man. I appreciate you, man. Be safe, my friend. All right, peace. You shut down people and come back. I think I'm going to turn this thing off. Hold on.